Hey everybody, we're Living Nerds here, I'm gonna hop into Hive Swap Friends Sim. Let's go. Okay, so last time we were on Volume 7, so now we're gonna hop into Volume 8 of Stresses, Song, and Otherwise. Hopefully things don't start off on a depressing note this time. Another night, another ramble. Oh, here we go. A classic song comes back to you as you continue on your way. Some of that good old earth wisdom about a specific kind of footwear being made for walking. Oh, jeez, these boots are made for walking. Okay, no. You wish you had that kind of footwear right now, in this current chapter of your life. Or any footwear, for that matter. You've definitely learned your lesson about getting overexcited at the prospect of new friends. And running out in nothing but a bathrobe. Oh, who are you kidding? Maybe not in that particular bathrobe way, but chances are high that that wasn't the last time you'll fly off in the buoyant afterglow of an intense friendgasm. Ew. Gross. <laughs> no. I'm gonna go for Chixie's Rock Smear this time, because... There's not really a particular order, I don't think, and also just I've been looking forward to this one. So, we're gonna start with this one. Ooh. Your point is, you need a wardrobe change. You should have asked Elward for one of her red leather jackets. You could really make one of those work. Jeez, this is kind of a crummy neighborhood. And there you go again, making snap judgments. Get a little alien culture into you and you're suddenly an expert. Hmm. Looks like you've found the Alternian nightlife. Well, technically all life here is nightlife. If people are nocturnal here, shouldn't nightclubs be called day clubs? If they're during the day? Yeah, probably. Maybe the lure of dancing and getting smashed with strangers is not enough to get people to brave the blistering sun. You doubt you'd have a stiff breeze for it? You aren't much of a partier. True. But recently, you are all about new experiences. You'll try anything once. Not a good idea. <laughs> I mean, we already proved that a long time ago, but still. <laughs> A long line of people snakes along the side of a building. It doesn't appear to be moving. The club must not be open yet. You consider getting in line, but there's so many people here. You really are more of a one-on-one -on -one friendship type. You go around back instead to your old friend the back alley and the dumpster. Distantly, you hear music. It comes on every few seconds and then drops off. Maybe a sound check? Ah. Uh. You hear something else. Ah. Uh. A musical sigh comes from up ahead. Didn't sound it from me, but it's okay. You turn a corner to find a girl standing alone outside a back entrance. A heavy door is propped open with a chunk of concrete. Like someone had gouged it out of the street. Probably. The girl has on a sweater dress and leg warmers. A bronze sign splashed across her chest. You wonder if you should consider painting a sign onto your clothes just to make yourself seem more normal. But it's a bathrobe. Yeah, no. Probably no point. You'd also need to paint yourself gray and find a pair of fake horns. Who would do something like that? Sounds like a huge pain with absolutely no benefits. Ooh, that's a hit to all the cosplayers out there. The girl hasn't noticed you yet. She is staring at her feet and sighing. Okay, so... Also, she's making weird little whoops and clicking noises. Or singing a few bars of wordless notes, starting low and then climbing high. Well, it sounds pretty good. The enclosed space between the alley walls makes it seem like it's coming from all directions. Maybe you should just leave. She looks busy, but 
Then another troll sticks their head around the open door, shooting the girl an unkind look and kicking the cement block door doorstop away. Oh, heck, there's really only one reason you would prop up one door. Grab the door before it can close. Stand there like an asshole. Grab the door. Displaying the dexterity of someone far healthier and far less dressed in a slinky bathrobe, you grab the door before it can slam closed. The bronze blood girl's attention snaps up and she breaks off mid-note. She takes in the misplaced concrete and you holding the door. Oh, thanks for catching that. I would have had to go all the way around the front. It must have been the wind. Just what sort of wind do they have here that could pick up a chunk of rock the size of a turtle? Unless wind is urban slang for some rude douchebag. She gives you a quick smile and darts through the door, letting it close behind her with a solid click. Yep. Locked. The brief, gleaming flare of friendship you felt she when she smiled at you in earnest thanks stutters and dies. You really had a moment there, but now she's inside and you're out here, where you'll never reap the fruit of glorious friendship you planted with the act of kindness. Geez, what's the point of doing something nice if you don't get any credit for it? Sleeves. Game over. Stand there like an asshole. Like the witness to a disastrous car accident, you stand there and watch as the girl notices the door closing and lets out a squeak, jumping for the handle. She misses it and smacks her knee against the metal frame. Ouch! Damn it! She has a soft, musical voice, even when she's swearing. You ask if she's okay. She stops rubbing at her knee and looks up at you. You are quite a bit taller than her, but she looks older than some of the other trolls you've hung out with. No worries. Well, at least not about my leg. If you want something to worry about, I'm sure I can come up with some ideas without much trouble. You assure her that you've had plenty to worry about recently, though you appreciate the offer. She gives a fruitless tug on the back door. She knocks. Nobody comes. She knocks again. Still nothing. You tell her that someone kicked the doorstop out of the way. She looks disappointed, but not surprised. Oh, well, I'll have to go back around to the front. Could be worse. Would you care to join me? Oh, God, you thought she'd never ask. This is working out perfectly. You are so glad she got locked out back here with you and the rest of the garbage. Exactly. I'm a piece of garbage. I'm Cheeksy. Cheeksy Rocksmere. Although I'm sure you already know that. I don't think you're an idiot or anything. You know, meet and greets are usually after the show, but you seem nice. You aren't sure how she figures that, since all you've done is stand around. It's true, though, so you don't protest. You are nice. Super nice. You might be the nicest son of a bitch on this whole dang planet. You ask her if she's performing here tonight. Of course. Why else would I be warming up in a dirty back alley? You tell her you've seen people do far weirder things. She laughs. You aren't wrong. People around here will do anything for attention nowadays. For instance, you are walking around in an abolition robe. You cough delicately. True. Very true. She's got you there. If you come inside with me, I can give you an autograph. I don't have anything to write with back here. Chixie seems to think that you are a fan who managed to get past security to accost her in person. She doesn't seem too upset, though. More like, delighted. 
You think back many friends ago, when Sarava told you it was dangerous for lowbloods to get popular. You wonder if Chixi trusts you because she thinks you are also a lowblood. Or maybe she's just not that popular. You follow her back to the front of the club, past the line of trolls waiting to get inside. A guy whistles at her and gives her a flirty little wave, along with a flat smile. How do you give someone a flat smile? A customer service smile. Oh, I get it now. She shows the bouncer something on her palm husk, and he lifts up the velvet rope. They're with me. They're my plus one. Well, you've never been anyone's plus one before. A bunch of people in line look annoyed, but Chixi ignores them. You follow her, tripping a little on the hem of your robe. Be careful, huh? You don't want to twist an ankle. Chixi speaks with a lilt, like a character in a musical, getting ready to burst into song. You hope you aren't supposed to participate if she does. You're a little too busted up for impromptu dancing numbers, and you're also liable to flash someone in this robe. Gross. You hear music and chatter from down the hall, but Cheeksy pulls you in another direction, to the dressing rooms. You pass several closed doors, stopping in front of one that seems to be in the process of being cleared out. A bunch of shit is piling out into the hallway. Clothes trailing out of suitcases, a microphone cord seems to be slithering slowly along the detris. Charming. God, I can't do anything without someone messing me around, locking me out, and now this. Who did this? I'm seriously out for blood tonight. Looks like someone commandeered her dressing room while she was out, as well as tossed all her shit into the hallway. I have to deal with this. I'll be back. You can borrow some clothes, if you want. In fact, I insist. She leaves you in the cramped little room. It's dark in the hall, but everywhere in Alternia is kept darker than is comfortable for you. You're getting used to it, though. You imagine humans used to have to deal with this all the time back before electricity, provided they didn't die immediately of, like, dysentery. You flick on the outline of white bulbs around the mirror. Oh, wow. Even in the soft, flattering light, you look like a grade-A, free-range disaster. Hot mess. Tagora's expensive rainbow drinker serum has rubbed off, and now you're mostly just dirty. Dusty. You wade through a couple of Cheeksy's suitcases, but everything here is too small for you. There's a couple sweater dresses and a hoodie that might fit, but without a pair of pants, that's gonna get real scandalous real fast. The only thing you find that works in the whole damn dressing room is a floaty purple dress hanging on the back of the door. Definitely not your style. You never would wear anything like this at home. But fuck it. Roll with the punches, right? And not in just violence ways, fashion ways. You give a little experimental twirl in front of the mirror. You aren't gonna break any hearts, but you'll do. You actually kinda dig it. You are busy, busy admiring yourself when Chixi comes back. She sniffles sharply, and there are tear tracks on her face. She isn't crying anymore. In fact, she looks mad as hell. Oh damn, is she mad at you? Did you manage to fuck something up without even being there? You've got mad fuck-up skills. I got bumped. They kicked me off the line. I was supposed to be opening. But some new band came in and they have a purple blood drummer. So the club owner let them take my place. Of course. Of course. This is how it always goes. God, she looks so sad. Time to break out your finely tuned comforting muscles, but before you can get those guns out, someone oozes up to the two of you. Someone you recognize. Oh yes, it's going to be who I think it is. Yup. Now how did his voice go? 
Oh, incredible, Miss Roxmere. What are the odds? It must be fate. Well, you chirped that you were coming to the show, so I guess the odds were pretty good. Zebra doesn't let this dim his sparkle. He isn't the type of guy to let facts get in the way. He hasn't even noticed you. He's too busy kissing the back of Cheeksy's hand. You schmoozer. Looking good, baby. I'm kind of a mess. I've been crying. Well, crying looks good on you. You're terrible. Zebra finally glances your way and does an extremely exaggerated double take. Wow, damn, I didn't even recognize you. You clean up really nice, you know. What are you talking about? I'm a mess. I'm dusty, I'm busty, and I'm a hot mess. You haven't cleaned up at all, really. You haven't bathed since Degora's fancy evolution trap, which was before we even met you. All you've done is put on a slinky dress. It's not like you aren't happy to see Zebra. You are. He's one of your many success stories. Even if he wanted to have something more. He's just, you know, the kind of friend you want to think back on fondly from time to time, remembering all the good times and not having more good times, if you get what I mean. Yeah, not necessarily the kind you want to hang out with, or have hung out with overall. Or have hang all over you. Like he is right now. Cheeksy looks at his arm around your shoulder and seems momentarily annoyed. Ooh, babe, you, you like this boy? Don't, don't. This boy, you, you're too good for this boy. <laughs> then her expression skips a couple tracks and hits back on neutral. So you've met? Where? Online? A in a forum. Can I join? Not in a forum. Unless you're talking about the form of life. He winks. Fate just keeps bringing us together, doesn't it? Just like you and me, Chixi baby. Chixi laughs. Now that she's gotten over surprise, her entire demeanor has changed. Her body language has relaxed, and she keeps biting her lip. She looks like an actor demonstrating bashful on command. Zebra is eating it up. Okay, I get what's going on now. It was really nice of you to post about my EP on your blog. I got a lot of listens from that. Babe, have I ever told you I think you're so strong? Seriously, low blood girls are so strong. I don't know if I'm doing his voice right. Oh well. Chixie laughs again. It sounds painful. Maybe once or twice. I love your new stuff. That one song, Poisonous Moon or whatever. Um, Bloody Sun. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Real good stuff, sweetheart. Can't wait to hear more tonight. Oh, right. He doesn't know that Cheeksy got bumped. Cheeksy meets your eyes. She seems to be trying to communicate something entirely using her eyebrows. Tell Zebra that Cheeksy isn't going to get to perform. Mind your own damn business. I'm gonna tell him. Aha, she's upset. <laughs> you tell Zebra about the higher caste trolls coming in and taking Cheeksy's place. She starts making frantic motions behind Zebra's back and shaking her head, but immediately stops when he turns to look at her. Classic. That true, babe? It's not a big deal. This sort of stuff happens in the business all the time. Or so people tell me. Don't worry about it. No, I am worried. I always worry about low bloods in terrible positions who can't help themselves at all. Rude. I'll take care of it for you. You really don't have to. Zebra touches her arm for way longer than is necessary and is 
closing in on harassment. It's more of a shoulder rub than a pat. Definitely harassment. Cheeksy seems to be trying very hard not to shrug him off. Her smile belongs on a Halloween mask. A rictus grin. The two of you watch him swagger off back toward the front hall. Cheeksy lets out a breath. I wish you hadn't done that. He's got a really popular music blog. And he's an indigo. So I have to be polite. One bad review from him and it's over for my career. But I try to interact with him as little as possible. You hadn't realized that Zebra was a musician. Oh, he's not. He just reviews music albums and shows, like, stuff like that. He makes a lot of reposts, but he's got a ton of followers. Don't get me wrong, it's really nice to be noticed, but he's just a little pushy, and I don't have time in my life right now for quadrants. You know what I mean? Definitely. Don't you worry. You do. You so do. Does Zebra try what he tried with you on every low blood he meets? You aren't sure if that makes you feel worse or better. Cheeksy talks about him like he's a natural disaster, a tornado that she had to avoid to keep from getting torn apart. Like it's just an inevitability that people would treat her like she owed them or something. I don't want to seem ungrateful. You tell her that she doesn't seem ungrateful. From where you're standing, she doesn't seem to be doing anything wrong. She sighs, blowing a piece of hair out of her eyes. Too bad doing everything right doesn't automatically mean things will go your way. When Zebra comes back, such a little time has passed that you don't think he could possibly have done anything. He shows you and Cheeksy all his teeth. I get it all fixed up for you. You go on tonight. In fact, you're headlighting. You're welcome. Cheeksy's mouth drops open. What? How? I get to do anything I want in my own club. Wait. What? Oh, dear. No. I bought it from the owner. Oh no. <laughs> He's just a teal. Seriously, business ownership? A little ambitious for a midblood, isn't it? Terrible. I convinced him that it would be easier for him and everybody else if I blood took over. I've been meaning to get into the club scene anyway. Now you'll always have somewhere to perform. Provided you do everything I say all the time. He grins to show you that's just a joke, but there's also something in his smile that you really, really don't like. You regret asking for his help. Sleaze! Sleaze! Bigger sleaze than me! So does Cheeksy, apparently. She gets right in your face. Nice work. Now I owe him even more than before. This is the only club around here that will let low blood solo acts perform. You can find your own way out, can't you? Game over. Yep. Mind your own damn business. You follow Cheeksy's lead and don't say anything. Zebra will find out pretty soon anyway, when the show starts and Cheeksy doesn't get on stage. He takes off, saying he's gonna go get a spot in the pit. There's no pit here. Her earnest, polite looks drop as soon as Zebra's out of sight. She's letting you see all the bits of herself that she has yet to hide from other people. You wonder if it's because you don't matter that much, or because she can sense your trustworthy nature. You are 
a natural optimist when it comes to friendship, so you decide to believe the latter. Come on, I want to get a good look at the jerks who took my stage from me, so I can talk about them on my vent chitter. You can follow it if you want, <laughs> only four people do. It's not like anyone cares about my problems anyways. Well, I mean, that one guy winked at you. Is he one of your followers, then? Eh? You risk an encouraging pat between her shoulder blades. She sniffs and wipes her nose. At least I have you, my one non-creepy fan. Even though you think that I snuck into a back alleyway just to say hi to you. At least I think you aren't creepy. I guess I don't know you that well. You assure her that you aren't creepy, at least not as creepy as that guy. Yep. Chixie starts to respond, but then breaks off. Her voice sticks in her throat like she swallowed a bug. Oh wait, they actually eat bugs here. Like she swallowed a live bug. Actually, they might eat live bugs. Well, fuck. Simile cancelled. Anyway, Chixie stops talking and you realize it's because she's listening instead. The first band is going on, and going from Chixie's expression, this must be the band that scooped her. I can't believe it. I can't. She takes off. You aren't sure if you're supposed to follow, but she swoops back in and grabs your hand to drag you along behind her. Why wouldn't you follow anyways? You go past the club entrance and up a staircase emerging in a tiny backstage area. Chixie stops just outside the stage lights. The band on stage is four trolls mid-cast, judging from their clothes. Although you suppose they don't have to wear clothes the color of their blood, though most trolls seem to. Law or tradition, both are dangerous to break. That's... That's my song. They didn't just steal my set. They stole my set list. Her cheeks flush in a ruddy brown and she shakes with rage. She begins singing along with them. Twist and pull, breathe the terror of the life on hell. Spines and gore forevermore on this nightmare island spell. I don't know what the pattern is, so. Eris above, blight below. I'm knocking on your hive's front door. Love me, please, I abhor. It has kind of a twangy country feel to it. Except it's about murder, or maybe love, you can't tell, it just doesn't really fit the band on stage's vibe. Okay, so that was supposed to be country, but I sang it like it was sadness, so it's okay. It doesn't really fit Cheeksies either, but then again, you haven't seen her perform. Maybe she's really different when she gets in a spotlight. She's crying now. Tears stream down her face as she sings. It's all over. Nobody is going to believe I wrote this music. Some little dirt blood country girl. You remember what Sarava told you about high blood stealing their music and acting like they wrote it. God, that's so unfair. Ghost writers. That sucks. Where's the bar? You should do something. This That sucks. Where's the bar? Let's get drunk. <laughs> Chixie looks up at you like she's only just remembered she has a physical body and not simply an amorphous blob of pure sadness. There's a cluster of bottles on a nearby amp. God, Morphago. Of all the brands that could cross galaxies, of course, it had to be Fago. Chixie grabs what looks like a liquor bottle. I am sad because they don't sell Fago here anymore. I really want Fago. I like the cola Fago. Is, what is that red pop? Or is that actually liquor? <laughs> right here. Come on. Not even my vent chitter is enough for this. Back in the dressing room, Cheeksie ends up upends several suitcases onto the floor, mixing her stuff with the other performers. 
Give her her give a shitometer is down in the red apparently. She flops down in the pile she's made and takes a huge gulp out of the bottle. Well, have some. It's awful. Encouraging. Come on, it's gross, but it won't kill you. You wish people would stop promising you that. So far, it's been true, but you still don't trust it. She takes another drink and hiccups, then holds the bottle out for you. Great peer pressure. Lying on a pile of sweaters with a distraught vocalist and getting wasted is exactly what you wanted to do with your evening. Chixie gives the bottle a shake. Oh well, you sucked smoke out of Bug's ass and you're still here. You drop down on the sweaters beside her. Chixie is dramatic, but you are disappointed to discover that she is not being dramatic about this. It is awful. Right? <laughs> Have some more. You do. God, that's bad. Chixie is getting a lot of tipsier than you. She's drinking faster, and she's smaller than you are. Not that you know shit about troll physiology. Come on, let's commiserate. It's hard, you know? You nod. Boy, do you know. The music business, I mean, especially when you're starting out. You have to be visible. But you also can't look like you're showing off. You have to pretend you don't like the attention or fame. Even if you do, but sometimes you have to pretend you do like it. Even if you don't. If you're low blood, you have to watch everything you do. All the time. If you're a high blood, you can do anything and everybody thinks it's awesome no matter what. Show business sucks. You want to mention that she's the one who decided to go into it in the first place. But that would be unkind. Nobody here seems to have a job or go to school, either. They all have this intensely obsessive hobbies, like painting, or music, or meat. Instead, you tell her that you are sure she'll write more songs. Sure. And they'll just steal those, too. You tell her that you're sure it's not true. Shh. Chixie attempts to put a finger to your lips, but gets it halfway up your nose instead. Ew! Shh. Complaining time. Not helpful advice time. Oh, dang, you can definitely get behind that, because you've got some complaints. You take another swig and it burns all the way down. You tell Chixie all about crash landing on the strange alien planet and broke ribs and hard times and bad wardrobe choices. You skirt around all the amazing friends you made, though you don't want her to experience friend envy. Halfway through your harrowing story, you hear something. <laughs> Chixie is uh, passed out, drooling on your dress. Better than puking. Do trolls puke? Hmm. I would assume they'd have some sort of puking thing because they'd need to expel certain things when they're sick and poisoned. Oh well, this isn't a vow of undying friendship, but it's not not friendly. Victory? One victory down, another one to go. You should do something. Yeah. Chixie clenches her fists. Yeah. She reaches into a snarled mess of equipment and comes back with a microphone that only looks a little bit squirmy. Then she walks over to a costume rack and pulls down a mask. It's plain white like the Phantom of the Opera's mask, jarring stark against the gaudy, organic styles of most everything else on Alternia. She waits for a dip in volume in the song and then she gets one right after the bridge and then she switches on the mo microphone and takes a huge breath. Shut the fuck up! The shout reverberates around the club. The sound of the crowd dips and then falls off almost entirely. The band staggers to a slow, 
Rattling stop. Nobody seems to know what's going on. Oh, hell, this isn't what you meant. You meant, like, egg their tour bus or trash them online. Chixie steps into the light, and Murmur goes up through the crowd. The band singer lowers her microphone. You should probably be wearing something else because you have your sign on your chest. She is in a short blue dress with long, vicious claws painted red. You aren't up on all the trends, but you're pretty sure that red is edgy. Chixie covers her microphone and says something to the band. The Serline stares at her for a few seconds before letting out a cascading spray of laughter. Sure, honey, okay. Condescending and sweet, like Cheeksy, is a toddler who happened to wander on stage. She points finger guns at the guy on the soundboard. Razor, give the lady a beat. Oh. Oh, God. You know what this is. You see Cheeksy's face framed by the light, focused and intent, all simpering gone. You like that? I wrote it. You hit that? I own it. Come in hot, trying to steal my spot. Oh lord, is this a lyric? Just grab my bulge and deep throat it. A dirty lyric. Holy shit, she's really doing this thing. A rap battle. Jesus. The Serline girl spits some stuff back. It's kind of basic, just general insults about Chixie's blood color and her lyrics being stale considering she stole Chixie's song. That doesn't really fly. The crowd doesn't know that though. They're eating it up. They probably think it's all part of the show. Some fiery little low blood coming on stage to shake things up. Paint your claws red, paint your mouth brown. Acting like you know what it's like down here on the ground. The crowd whoops. This might be a high blood owned club, but there's definitely a lot of low bloods in this crowd. But it's imitation. I got no expectation with this. This is your final station. You aren't going to hit higher than this collaboration. You aren't like a rap expert or anything, but you can definitely tell that Cheeksy isn't either. She gets breathless toward the ends of her lines and hits some words strangely, but the crowd is really feeling her. Definitely more than they're feeling the Serline. Chixie's voice picks up speed and power and she gains confidence. Drawing energy off the crowd, you realize you're leaning forward too, making sure you catch every word. She goes through a whole list of the band's shortcomings, including their fashion sense, their talent level, and their interpersonal clusterfuck. They are apparently a well, pretty well-known group online. She throws in some stuff about them stealing her music and the crowd ooze, like this is a middle school cafeteria. So kill me. Call me. Call the drums. It won't change a bit of what they all know. When you're a thief, what do you expect? I beat you all square. Hey, show some respect. Chixie drops the mic. The room erupts. Holy shit, that was awesome. She just came up with all of that on the fly. The Celine looks furious, and another troll runs onto the stage to try and get the crowd under control. They're all chanting, Mask, 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 mask. I shouldn't hit my desk. Chixie runs back off stage, chucking both the mask and the microphone back where she found them. She grabs you, and you run all the way back out to the alleyway where you met letting the door close behind you. Guess you're done with that, club. Chixie's eyes are round and shell-shocked. I... I just did that. Yeah, she really did. I just told a bunch of high bloods to eat my bulge. You don't know what a bulge is, but... Yep. Fuck. <laughs> they liked me, didn't they? They were cheering for me. You say, yeah, you're pretty sure they were. Holy shit, I'm going to get cold. Did you hear all that stuff I said? You can't stay, you can't say stuff like that. You remind her that she was wearing a mask when she did it, but she also has her sign showing, so. All right, 
Right. Nobody will know who I am. I'm, I'm safe. Oh, but that means nobody will know it was me. You aren't quite following. I'm not going to get any credit at all. God. Why does everything in my life have to be so metaphorically resonant? Oh, girl, you feel that. You deaf know what that's like. Hey, that was pretty dope. Both of you jump about a foot in the air. A low blood in a hoodie and a pair of sunglasses slouches against the brick beside the back door. Either you are seriously impaired today, or he is seriously good at sneaking. It's a he, okay. You got any stuff online? He asks Chixi. She gapes at him. But I was wearing a mask. How did you know? Well, you're standing right outside the door, and you're wearing the same clothes as you did on stage, so... Oh, right. I was saying that. Clever you. Don't worry about it. Plausible deniability, right? Catch you later. He slinks off, one hand raised in a casual cool guy farewell. You see, Cheeksy, some people will figure out who you are, possibly just randos outside of the club, but still, she can do this. She can make her dreams come true. You're totally right. I so can. I guess all hope isn't lost. At least, not until another insurmountable obstacle comes along. Thanks for, well, everything. I would never have gone out there if not for you. She hesitates for a few seconds, but then goes in for a slightly damp hug. Sorry, stage lights and terror make me sweat. Oh. Nice. So that was it. I hope you all liked it. Comment, like, subscribe if you want to see more of the things that I've done. You could check the link in the description of the playlist if you want to see more of that. Or you can check out my channel. Keep gaming. Sleaze. Sleaze. Bigger sleaze than me.